Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter. And welcome to a cooler Easter. We decided to take no chances and dispensed with the Alps. High Episcopalians would not approve. We think we're safe here. A special welcome to all of you. A special welcome to all of our guests and visitors uh, who may be tuning in by live stream. Welcome to Grace St. Paul's. My only announcement is if you see children coming in, re refer them over to that lady, Jessica, and she will have a Sunday school class for them. Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day to walk in the light. This is the day to share signs of peace. This is the day to believe what we have not seen. This is the day to remember what we cannot touch. Come, let us celebrate the God of resurrection and life.
May Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Transform us, O God, that we may have eyes to see and hearts to understand not only what you do on our behalf, but what you call us to do so that your realm may come to fruition and glory. Amen. A reading from Acts. Now the whole group of those who were believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked because of fear, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the di disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand is in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although, although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The good news of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Doubt is not the opposite of faith, it is an element of faith. Sometimes I think it is my mission to bring faith to the faithless and doubt to the faithful. Paul Tillich, sit down. He wasn't present that Easter evening. Maybe the other sent him out to bring back coffee and donuts. Upon his return, he heard the excitement of his buds. We've seen the master. He was here. We saw him. Here say to me, says Thomas, it'll take more than your words to get me to believe. I'll have to feel the marks in his hands and my hand right into the side where they speared him. For his less than immediate acceptance, he gets labeled Doubting Thomas. Just when the adjective got added, I don't know, but I have a hunch about who used the word doubt in a pejorative manner. Most likely someone in authority who could shame someone who wasn't sufficiently conforming to group think. Can't you just see the wagging finger of criticism and hear the Saturday Night Live church lady? Are we becoming a doubting Thomas? More accurate to have called him bold Thomas or honest Thomas. For one week, Thomas lives in and with doubt. Times of doubt are normal and germane to being human. Doubting, whether entered into as a younger person or older, may be essential in finding a more grounded, relevant, and mature faith. Doubting can contribute to sloughing off outmoded ideas 
that have lost their punch and zest. In looking back at a younger version of myself in, from my 20s, I had to go through my anger over God not coming through for me in the way I expected God to come through for me. When I was demanding that God be more of a rescuer, it was that time. Yet, had I been rescued, I would have foregone deeper learning, yet another level of conversion. Imagine how many people who got swept up in the January 6 insurrection are wishing they had found their way to the courage to doubt the lingo and spiel that they swallowed whole. How many of them will find their way to support and challenge, to retrace their steps that led them into being part of a mob. The mob, all of them became, is akin to the Jerusalem mob that shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Thomas, don't cheat yourself out of trusting, says Jesus. Let yourself believe whether Thomas did put his hand in Jesus' side or held his hands, we don't know. But he could not hold back any longer. My master, my God, it is you. The most energetically charged verb in the Gospel of John is believe. This verb is preferred to the noun faith in that gospel. It's not that one is better than the other. One brings a slightly different look, just as all the gospel writers do, with each of them having a perspective of looking at the jewel. Believe? Get out of your own skin. Stop settling for who you are at this time and in this moment at this phase of your life. Become a composite of who you are with me, the Christ. To believe in the Gospel of John is to be more fully alive. I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. It is essential to get to yes, to be mo moving towards yes, all in the process of letting go and opening one's heart to the new. Jan Martel, the author of Life of Pi, if Christ spent an anguished night in prayer, if he burst forth from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then surely we are also permitted doubt. But we must move on. To choose doubt as a philosophy of life is akin to choosing immobility as a means of transportation. It takes faith to doubt. It takes faith to reconnect or even commit for the first time. No one knows exactly what the resurrection was. The earliest accounts emphasize the empty tomb, the results of the resurrection. Over time, details were added, such as our story this morning. In other accounts, the risen Christ is not recognizable. He is misperceived as a gardener are not being immediately known on the walk to Emmaus. He is different, and he is the same. So the disciples, now all together in this room, probably the first time they've been in the room together since the night before the crucifixion when they heard Jesus 
parting words to them with his great emphasis and the new commandment to love one another. So they've all found their way back to one another after having scattered. And they are scared. Are they coming for us? One asked of the other. For they have seen catastrophe. He was tortured by crucifixion, a gruesome Roman death for enemies of the state. And now they were in shock and disorientation, and we would call it PTSD. Now each one felt so compelled to reorder his life that for the past three years they gave up their normal lifestyles and stuck with him. So compelling was his presence. This teacher, healer, prophet, Peter once exclaimed that he had the words of eternal life. Everyone knew the Messiah couldn't be crucified. If there was any crucifying to be done, the Messiah would be in charge of that, dishing it out. Everyone just knew that the Messiah would be a triumphant figure, a successful military hero. Then he is present. His first words, shalom, peace. No retributive justice for him. No grudge holding for his closest of companions who had left him in the lurch. These shaky reeds, this motley crew, who at best abandoned him or went to sleep on him when he needed them, and at least in one case, an overt denial of even knowing him, peace be with you. The deep shalom, like a spring from earth's depths bubbling up, that kind of peace and security and reconciliation. He makes no accusations. He gives them what he asks of them to do in going out from this moment. That is to forgive. Live into forgiveness. Practice forgiveness. Let it sink into your cells. He showed them the results of cruel crucifixion, the scars, the wounds. These are not to be passed over. They are real, evidence of suffering endured. He does not hide them, for they are part of his recent history. They represent both the pain of humanity and the pain of God. Augustine referred to these wounds as a, a kind of beauty and dignity. If we dare, we can see a reflection of our own scars, our own shames, regrets, remorse. To see this Christ is best done through the eyes of contemplation rather than through left brain comprehension. This resurrected one now comes with bounty and generosity. After giving his peace, he breathes on them. And this holy breeze is no less than the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the advocate, the supporting force that will, ab that will enable them to do the ongoing work in the days ahead. And what is that work? It is forgiveness. Sandra Sch Schneider, in Jesus Risen in Our Midst, concludes from analyzing the Greek that the verse says nothing about retaining the sins. Translated literally, it says, of whomever you forgive the sins, they are forgiven to them. Whomever you hold are held fast. First off, why would you want to hold all of that baggage? Hurtful, angry memories. They're dead weight, not worthy of any value to be faced and known, yes, and then relinquished. 
again, a process of forgiveness that can take some time to accomplish. And the disciples, of course, are always the stand-ins for you and for me. The disciple, now us, we are called to embrace the world as he embraces us. Forgiveness is the foremost sign of the resurrection. It is the primary tax, task of those transformed followers. They are forgiven and are now to forgive and forge forgiveness in a world so desperately in need of love with those whom it is most difficult to forgive right now in this moment on this second Sunday of Easter in your life can you forgive that person 10 percent no can I hear 3.5 percent just make sure you keep upping the ante just a little in your process of letting go and forgiving. And then you will step more deeply into freedom, the freedom of the resurrection, your heritage and legacy that he gives. The cross unveiled exposed the poisonous violence of this world. Yet the Son of Man, the human one, offers the anti-venom, the freedom from delusion. Darkness keeps trying to put out the light. It did not, it cannot, and it never will. We believe in God, whose love is the source of all life, and the desire of our lives, whose love was given a human face in Jesus of Nazareth, whose love was crucified by the evil that waits to enslave us all, and whose love, defeating even death, is our glorious promise of freedom. Therefore, though we are now fearful and full of doubt, in God we trust, and in the name of Jesus Christ, we commit ourselves in the service of others to seek justice and to live in peace, to care for the earth and to share its goodness with those suffering from anxiety, to live in the freedom of forgiveness and the power of the spirit of love, and in the company of the faithful, so to be the church when the world needs church. Amen. Living Christ, you are risen from the dead. You are stronger than death. Raise our eyes to see you as the new day dawns. Give us the faith like Thomas to doubt, knowing that when we seek the truth, we find you. We pray for the church. For the household of faith, the Church of the Risen Christ, we pray. Be with, Be with us and bless us, O oh God. For all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery.
for the welfare of the world, we pray. Be with us and unite us, O God. For our nation and our common good, we pray. Be with us and guide us, O God. For those who care for us, we pray. Be with us and help us, O oh God. For all who put their lives on the line for us, we pray. Be with us and help us. For all who suffer and struggle, we pray. Be with us, us and heal us, us, O God. God. For all of the world, we pray. Be with, Be with us and bring us full life again, O God. God. When fears multiply and danger threatens, when sickness comes and death confronts us, it is God's blessing of shalom that sustains us and upholds us, lightening our burden, dispelling our worry, restoring our strength, renewing our hope, reviving us. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Look at my hands and my feet, touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones.
giver of life, receive all we offer you this day. Let the spirit you bestow on your church continue to work in the world through the hearts of all. Amen. God is with us. God, God is present, present here. Rejoice, lift up your hearts. We lift, lift our, our hearts to the, the Most High. High. Let us give thanks to the Holy One. It is, it is right, right to offer thanks, thanks and praise. We praise you, God of freedom, for you breathed life into the void and showed yourself as the one who loves in freedom. We give thanks for your risen Son, Jesus, who was dead and buried, but who you raised on this day, and who is alive forever, reaching out to us, wiping away our tears, and calling us by name. From the nothingness of slavery, you called a people into being and led them to springs of life. The presence of your glory went with shattered exiles into strange and distant lands, and gathered from the valley of despair the flesh and blood of living hope. In Jesus, you confronted the powers that killed and oppressed. You spoke to those considered dead and helped them stand again. He taught us to die that we might live. He gave himself for us tortured and forsaken, but he could not be confined by death. In the garden, he speaks our name. In the breaking of the bread, he shows himself among us. By the lakeside, in the new day, he calls us to take up his work. Therefore, with all who lost faith, all who walked away in sadness, with the women at the tomb and the men who hid in fear, we confess ourselves surprised by the suddenness of dawn and join in the undying song of heaven. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful caretakers and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. 
we would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never cease to care for us and prepare the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ fills all creation. creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread, this wine. By your, by your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with Paul, the women at the tomb, the disciples hiding in fear, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Oremos como nuestro Salvador Cristo nos enseñó. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad, en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y librarnos del mal. Porque tuyo es el reino, tuyo es el poder, y tuyo es la gloria, ahora y por siempre. Amén. Amén. Be known to us, risen Christ, in the breaking of the bread. Alleluia. The bread which we break makes all of us one with you. Alleluia. At Grace St. Paul's, everyone is welcome at communion of whatever your faith or no faith tradition may be. The gifts of God for the people of God.
When Mary, ready to embalm the dead, ran in fear from the empty tomb, it was Easter, Easter day. day. When Thomas touched the wounds and set himself free, it, it was Easter, Easter day. day. When Emmaus became synonymous with welcome and the breaking of bread with strangers, it, it was, was Easter, Easter day. day. When the hungry are fed at the same table as the rich, it, it is Easter, Easter day. When weapons are beaten to plowshares and peace is a word to be shouted, it, it is Easter, Easter day. day. When the stranger is welcomed in community and the lonely are restored to relationship. It is Easter Day. Amen. May you trust in God's promises to the people. Peace, security, blessing, even when they are difficult to believe. May you know that God's news is good news, nourishing, true, even when people tell you it is not. And when you encounter doubt, may you strengthen your belief, guiding you in God's wisdom and counsel as you are blessed by God, Creator, Resurrected Son, and in our midst, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the resurrection. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 